Hello friends, are you a person who travels a lot or love recreational freshwater activities? Or maybe you are in a direct or indirect contact with some animals. Then, or you belong to a medical field. You should consider watching this video to know about this disease. Now, what I am going to discuss today. My topic is leptospirosis. And as the name suggests, leptospirosis is caused by leptospirus. And there are three types of leptospirus. Number one, some are pathogenic, some are non-pathogenic, and some are intermediate types. And how do they look like? Leptospires are thin, coiled, and highly motile organisms who are having hooked ends and having two periplasmic flagellas attached to its cytoplasmic membrane for its motility. And they are having point six, 6 to 20 micrometer long and about 0 0.1 micrometer in width. So you can think how they small are how much small they are sorry for my english and now let's discuss about this epidemic they this disease is mostly seen in uh, tropical and subtropical regions be only because of one thing that climate and poor hygienic conditions supports its growth supports its infection because uh, lactospire can remain viable in humid environment for many weeks to months or years that is the reason it causes it remain viable that is why it may infect so frequently that about 1 million people suffer from this disease yearly on a yearly basis and in tropical regions mostly peak in, peak incidence is seen in rainy season Whereas in subtropical regions, in summer season, its peak incidence is seen. Now, what are its risk factors? As I told, if you are in direct contact with any animals, direct or indirect contact with animals, or who are involved in recreational freshwater activities, then that may risk you for, the, for getting this infection. Now, let's talk about its pathogenesis. Basically, its transmission occurs from a cut or abraded skin. Then, in fact, then organisms takes entry into your blood and from there it cross all your tissue barriers and from there it reaches your organs through the blood. All right. So that's why uh, that's why it is also it also causes multi organ failure. And I will discuss like what changes you will see in uh, see in different different organs and its incubation periods. First of all, you should know that which is two days to twenty days, and it is very important. And it is an organism. We can culture it. We can culture it in only this initial phase. After which, maybe cultures cultures may come negative. And it needs spatial medias for uh, its training, for its culture. All right. And now, in kidney, what changes we can expect? In kidneys, it it causes it causes acute tubular necrosis. By first of all, there may be acute tubular edema, and thereby acute tubular infiltrates develop there, and later on causing acute tubular necrosis. And what happens in liver? liver focal necrosis starts focal infiltration of cells overall liver cells starts dying and patient may develop symptoms of jaundice what happens in other organs heart lungs and skin skeletal muscles there are they, they may develop there you can see some vitiquies can present on skin or internally if we can see there are some hemorrhages and if hemorrhages are present which may uh, there is it is also found that there will be a decreased number of platelets exact reason is not known but maybe our body is trying to cover that loss cover that blood loss which is going on uh, protecting because uh, our platelet what is the platelet function platelets prevent bleeding all right so that 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 may be the reason the platelets are decreasing throughout the body now we should know what are the clinical features of this disease. First of all, its clinical manifestation may be biphasic, means two phase. Number one, 
may be acute phase and second one is the immune phase acute phase is of about 2 to 10 days which is followed by fever and afterwards it, it is all about immune phase if any person can develop immunity from that infection it is it, it is totally depending on the body immunity some people are some people immunity is so strong and some people are not so immune so that is why some people uh, progress to severity so i will discuss the symptoms in the form like if patient is present, presenting with mild leptospirosis and the severe leptospirosis like what happens in mild leptospirosis mild leptospirosis presents with fever headache photophobia and if patient is having headache with photophobia we can think for migraine also so we have to keep in mind a proper diagnosis and if and some patient also presents with retro or vital pain the pain behind the eye and which means what we it is mimicking the features of dengue we have to think that also other symptoms like nausea vomiting and pain abdomen and conjunctival suffusion now you will think what is conjunctival suffusion basically red color red color conjunctiva without any exudate without any pass or any discharge and what you will see on examination on patient examination we can see icterus if liver is involved till, till, till down stage or we can see conjunctival suffusion from our naked eye we can see conjunctiva is getting red colored we can see spleen enlargement splenomegaly and we can see liver enlargement hepatomegaly all right so according accordingly we can uh, we can see we can diagnose it because we need to uh, think because whatever mind knows only can we can detect if our mind doesn't know we can we cannot detect it so that is why we can plan accordingly what about what if a patient develops to a severe uh, severe leptospirosis patient may develop severe hypotension patient may, patient may develop acute kidney injuries okay and then uh, patient may have severe electrolyte imbalance and patient may end up into multi organ failure and patient can die of that infection so this is a deadly disease also and pay if if once a patient get affected he he or she can excrete that leptospire in their urine so we have to use water very efficiently if any person is involved in these kind of activities fresh water activities they should consult their doctor so that they can take appropriate prophylaxis for that and now let's talk about its diagnosis how do we diagnose it we have various blood tests available like we can do complete blood count wbc count will be raised inflammation markers like c reactive protein and the esr will be raised platelets counts will be decreased as i have told you in pathogenesis also and other tests are microscopic agglutination test and elisa these are the standard test but definitive they are not uh, positive in the initial 5 days that is not, that is why they delay the proper initiate initiation of the therapy so we prefer polymerase chain reaction test so please because pcr is having very very specific and sensitive for even if infection is just of 5 days and other tests like usd serum bilirubin we can go for usd in what what we can see in ultrasound as i have told you that hepatomegaly and splenomegaly is there we can find out that in ultrasound also and serum bilirubin serum bilirubin will be raised liver enzymes liver enzymes will be raised ast and alt will be raised all right so accordingly we can plan but for pl any planning you should visit your doctor if you are suffering from any disease now what are all differential diagnoses anyone could think of with this disease patient can have dengue chikungunya and what are other hepatitis hiv okay then we have other th other things other things like we have treatment of it because treatment is available
because if early initiation of uh, antibiotics can prevent it so that is but i can't discuss the treatment on it uh, right now because it's not allowed so i'm discussing i'm throughout the video i was discussing about the prevention first you should wear proper protective gears protective eye equipment protect protective uh, you should cover your whole body when you are entering the entering into the water for any water activities you should uh, not come in contact with any infected animals as as such proper vaccinations are not available because uh, there are so many serovirus of this uh, in uh, leptospires that is not possible to get immunized with all of the serovirus which are found nowadays so you any anyway whatever you have learned from this video if you think is enough for you or if you have any query you can ask me in my comment below and i will reply to your question immediately on that it's my guarantee and if you think my effort was good enough you can like and subscribe my channel thank you so much for watching bye bye mm <laughs>